Hi, this is John Anderson. You're listening to Dave J in L.A. and myself. Hi, John. Uh, yes, hey. indeed, the one and only John Anderson on the phone. How are you doing today, John? Very good. Thank you so much. Great. Pleasure talking to you. Um, let's start by talking about your latest release, which is a collaboration with Royna Stoll from the Flower Kings, um, a recording called Invention of Knowledge. Can you tell me how that project came about? Well, I met Royna in uh, Miami, first of all. Uh, I got on a boat. It was a prog rock special boat trip. 3,000 prog rock fans and a bunch of great musicians, a lot of different kinds of bands. And I was doing my solo show, and we uh, floated away to the Bahamas, very fancy. And uh, I did my solo show, went to listen to a couple of great bands, and I actually went to see Transatlantic, and they were performing their latest album. Very interesting band, very good band. And I noticed the guitar player, this guy, Roy Stout, very, very happening guitar player. And then... I'd actually been in touch with the drummer from the band, and he'd asked me, why don't we do some uh, Yes songs at the end of the trip, like a festival ending? And I said, okay, let's do it. So mm -hmm. I asked them, would they like to do uh, Revealing, which is uh, a 20-minute work? And they all said, yes, we've got to do it. And we did that, Out of the Sunrise, Roundabout, On of Lonely Heart. And... Uh, we did it on the last night, and I just noticed that Ronya had a, a special guitar style, and I just gave him a hug at the end of the show, and then within a couple of months, uh, we got in touch with each other, because uh, there was a guy on the boat, a guy called, um, what's his name now? I'll remember it in a minute. He actually runs this record company called Inside Out Records, mm -hmm. and uh, his last name is Weber. Anyway, Mr. Weber <laughs> got in touch with me yeah. and said, why don't you and Ronya get together and make an album? Mm -hmm. And I remember that Ronya was with this band Flower Kings up, uh, way in the 80s, you know, and they loved, uh, actually Ronya loved Yes Music and the music that I'd recorded in my life. So it was actually like a meeting of uh, two good friends, mu musical brothers, if you like, and uh, I just started sending him some music. This is one and a half years ago. And I started sending him some musical ideas, uh, maybe half a dozen songs that I had uh, waiting to be created. And he actually did an incredible production of the songs. But it took over a period of six months. He did a lot of work on it with him and his friends there in Sweden. So we actually made the album via the internet. We actually didn't meet again until about two months ago in in, uh, in L.A. to do a photo shoot. Mm -hmm. So it's amazing how you can make an album through the Internet, as interesting and as musical as uh, Invention of Knowledge is, without seeing each other. But we were connected, and I always say, well, we're on, we're on the same planet, so I'm sure that works a lot. Yeah. So the Internet is such an incredible vehicle. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask you about the rec recording process, and how you went about it, and um, did did the musical ideas come first, or the lyrics? And then also, did you have a particular lyrical theme in mind, or a musical style in mind, before you started? Well, the most important thing were the songs. I'd written these songs on and off with a, about five or six people over the last eight years. I've been writing with so many people, because I put an advert on my website saying Musicians Wanted, send me a minute of your music. When the, when the website and, and, and Skype and uh, the, the internet, iTunes and MP3s where you could send music to each other started up in about, it's about 12 years ago, I jumped on that because uh, to be able to work with musicians everywhere in the world is, is magical. Mm -hmm. And uh, it keeps me alive. It keeps me musically awake. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I had all these songs and uh, I sent the songs, which had lyrics and everything, uh, to Ronya, but he decided to rearrange the musical side of it, which was amazing that he would change the music completely on most of the songs. Uh, one or two of the songs are very similar to the originals, but his his uh, the, the key to working with Ronya was he would send back uh, the, his version of the music on top of the, you know for the song. And, uh, and then he would extend it a little bit with more sort of 
progression of music, and I'd start singing on that as well. So we sort of dovetail one song to another song with a little bit of music of me and me and Ronya. So that's how it really evolved, and uh, the lyrics, generally speaking, was the idea of the invention of, uh, of knowledge. It was all about how we're reinventing ourselves continually, and if you look back over the years, the inventions that we've created are sort of bouncing us into the next generation of inventions. Here we are going through the internet revelation, so we call it the internet revolution, like the uh, you know, 100 years ago, it was a mechanical uh, revolution, yeah. the industrial revolution. And 100 years before that, it was the farming revolution and how to create big farming experiences around the world. And it goes on and on into the past. We're pushing ourselves now into the future that we're talking about uh, high-speed uh, travel, space travel is happening now using the magnetic fusion and uh, getting to the moon in 40 hours mm -hmm. uh, is, is not beyond the means of the next 10 years. And we're getting rid of the flying around in dustbins like uh, David Bowie once sang about. <laughs> Here I am sitting in a tin can, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it's amazing how we are evolving very, very fast now. Uh, you know, we, we have this extraordinary technological world around us, uh, talking about virtual reality, uh, mm -hmm. video games that are totally virtual reality now. Uh, there are some uh, incredible involvements of holography uh, that you can read about and see on the internet of people uh, talking to people in different parts of the city using mm -hmm. these specialized uh, recording systems. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, so people can actually, it's like Obi-Wan Kenobi, you know, um, <laughs> you know when, when uh, Princess Leia was standing there, help me, Obi-Wan, you're my only hope. That's coming to realization now. And mm -hmm. flying cars is happening, by the way. Mm -hmm. That's all to do with drones. You get, a, you get a bigger electric drone, and you get a, they're actually making them in, uh, in Korea, I believe. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love the idea of the evolution of... Uh, you know, the adventure that surrounds us in the, in, the, in, the, in the invention of our next world and so on and so on, mm -hmm. because it'll it'll open up our world to understand why we're here. I actually, yes, I mean, so many amazing things uh, happening at the moment, and especially uh, communication-wise. And uh, I don't know whether you saw that um, Peter Gabriel. Uh, a TED talk that he did, where he's actually experimenting there, getting animals to communicate with other animals via the internet in a, with a monitor and a screen and, you know, dolphins are touching the screen to get reactions and responses from other well, animals. It, yes, it's, it's a perfect <laughs> time to understand that we're all connected. Mm -hmm. And we all know this, and we've talked about it for the last, whatever, whenever, I think when, we, when, when the, God bless the Beatles for bringing a little bit of sunshine into the world. Uh, with uh, Sergeant Pepper along with the, the great Brian Wilson and all these great musicians of the 60s that pushed everybody into the 70s, musically speaking, but also consciously speaking. That's why we had this wonderful, uh, the hippie sort of world happened in the 60s. I was a hippie, still am. And uh, hippie comes from Hopi, you know, the the great nation of Hopi Indian. Yeah. And so we're learning to understand a lot of things that surround us. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, an incredible life to be living in. I'm very, very fortunate and grateful and humble and thankful mm -hmm. to be making music all the time. And this album is all about that. And uh, there's a reflection on the album because it's a really, it works. The, the mm -hmm. album works. And people who are interested in music on different levels, it's an album that really touches you and it, it, it touches me. Anybody who's listened to it, the reviews have been amazing around the world. And that's all that you need, you know, people to enjoy it. Yeah, I mean, um, as well as, you know, obviously the progressive rock themes that are in there, there's some nice jazz movements in there as well. Some of things. course, yeah. I was just going to ask, uh, and even going back to the, the whole package, the, the cover artwork is really good too. Um, yeah, I remember when we first, uh, I spoke to Rania about the artwork of uh, making uh, like a 3D cover or something 
crazy like you start thinking when you start working on a project how can we do something different and he had this guy Silas and uh, who sent us this early early drawings and I said this is exactly right now if we can make this move when people, when people look at the artwork on the cover it should be moving so we actually did some videos that are coming out and uh, actually I put a couple up on my website Mm -hmm. of uh, the the artwork moving and me singing. Okay. So if you go to Facebook, thejohnanderson.com, you can actually see these beautiful uh, artwork uh, videos. You know, short vignettes, they're yeah. really. Yeah. I was just wondering, um, during that um, recording process, when you're, you know, backwards and forwards of files, um, is is that a help or a hindrance to the creative process when you're not actually in the same room to give instant feedback or, you know, like, hey, how about if you change this here or, you know, do that? Actually, actually what it does is very interesting because, as I said, we're on the same planet. So uh, Ronya would send me a piece of work and, and, and I'd listen to it and, and I would right away know what was working and what doesn't quite work. So I could email him back and say, before you lock yourself into this, try adding another verse at the end of mm -hmm. this piece because it needs to be extended a little bit. And then add some very uh, sort of um, dreamy sort of section because it's just been a little bit heavy for the last uh, three minutes, four minutes. Now an extra verse at the end and then an extra something there would be great. And it was like he understood what I was saying because within an hour he sent it back exactly the way I was thinking. Well, that's great. Well, the whole the whole result uh, is very impressive. Great sound. Yeah, I think Ronya uh, is one of those great things uh, because we worked on it on and off for a year and a half and he would go on tour with Steve Hackett and I was mm -hmm. doing touring with uh, Jean-Luc mm -hmm. and I had a couple of shows. I'd go out and do some solo shows. So in between that, I'd come back home and I'd have a day resting and then go in the studio and think, okay, I wonder where we are with the album. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, the album comes up and I can hear it clearer. Because if if you spend a little too much time on anything, you can get a little bogged down with how does it sound? Is it good? Is it right? Is it wrong? But because we had space in between the creation of the of the album, we were able to look at it very clearly after different periods of time. So I didn't actually hear the whole album until March this year, mm -hmm. only two or three months ago. And we put the album together and we worked on it for a year and a half. And I sensed that the music should work, mm -hmm. but you don't know until you listen to it all the way through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was relieved after listening to it once through. I went, oh my gosh, this really <laughs> worked. So, yeah. so, so happy. Yeah, exactly. And then the next thing, you know, you think about this is just music. It's not, it's not uh, pop music or it's not radio music. It's not something people are going to hear unless they buy the album. Um, it's just good music. And that's what music really is. It's all a musician wants to make good music. If he's lucky enough to become a, a, a pop star or a rock and roll star, great. And, you know, I, I've been through that experience and it was... It's an extraordinary experience, but it isn't reality in a sense. It's just something that happens, like a, a they call it a flash in the pan, mm -hmm. and you, you have it. You, you're, you're a big hit record. You have a number one for about three months, and owner of Lonely Heart. You know, for one year we were kings of the world, mm -hmm. and then after that, then you've got to become kings of the world again. And sometimes it doesn't happen. Yeah. So music is more important in a way. Yeah, <laughs> and talking about. Um... Yes, and great musicians you've worked with. Um, the next project you're working with is collaborating with your former Yes colleagues, Rick Wakeman and Trevor Rabin. So um, when was that idea first put together and who proposed that? Well, I've been mentioning it to Rick and Trevor for a couple of years because I've been in touch with Rick. I did a tour with him a couple of years ago, three years ago now, in in, uh, in, in the east coast of uh, USA. We've done a tour of England, which was a lot of fun. Me and Rick together is just complete silly fun. Yeah. And, you know, it has to be. Yeah. Um, because, you know, he, he's always telling jokes on stage and it's hard work. 
think she's doing a stand-up gig, you know. I was going to say, you two are obviously very different characters, but you've obviously got a great respect for each other. Well, yeah, but I, I believe me, I, I, I'm a Monty Python freak. I know everything about Monty Python and the goons yeah. and Peter Sellers and Spike Milligan is my hero, you know. Mm-hmm. Anybody who would put on his tombstone, I told you I was ill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't believe that Spike Milligan, uh, one of the great writers as well, I loved his books. And so when me and Rick get together, we're really very playful. Mm-hmm. And uh, we actually played, uh, you know, people put on this intro music for when you go on stage. Yeah. Well, we found this, uh, it's, it's, uh, I think it's called the, it's the also spec Zarathus by the Plymouth Symphonia. Mm-hmm. Is it the Plymouth Symphonia? It's so bad. <laughs> it really is the worst version you could ever imagine. Is it like a, we, but, but it's just really bad orchestra. It's a very, very bad orchestra. And we would put that on before we went on stage. And we could not stop laughing. <laughs> so there's Rick, you know. And then on the other side, uh, me, and, me and Trevor. I've known Trevor for now... Gosh, since 1984, which is like many, many years, 40 years, mm-hmm. sort of. And uh, the interesting thing about Trevor is that when he left the band, he went on to become a very, very interesting and uh, great film score mm-hmm. creator. He did, he's done about 40 movies in the last 15, 16 years. Mm-hmm. So I would be down to watch him work. And I marvel at the, the, the talent of the guy. He can score music and he can hear it in his head mm-hmm. and write it down and he can hear music in his head and write it down, which is uh, an extraordinary uh, feat for any musician to be able to do. And we became fast friends about five or six years ago because I'd go down and watch him work because mm-hmm. I was very interested in how he was ev- evolving as a musician. Mm-hmm. And then a couple of years ago I mentioned, you know, one day Trevor we've got to go on the road together again. And he said, I want to, I want to, but I've just got to finish these two movies. Right. <laughs> yeah. A year later, I'd say the same thing, you know. Mm-hmm. And so it was last uh, December that um, Rick's manager, an old friend of ours called Brian, said, you know what, guys, why don't you get together? So it, it was a perfect sort of meeting of the minds that Trevor said, look, I'm going to have a year off from making movies. And Rick said, I'm going to have a year off from telling jokes. And we all said, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> but I said, that would be good, so let's get together. And now we've been talking, we've been writing some ideas together and talking about the, the, the show that we want to put together. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're very excited. It just takes a lot of work. Yeah, I was just going to say that it's set out as a recording project or touring project initially. Of course, it was supposed to be both, but we've run out of time. I think we're going to go on stage and do some classic Yes music from Mm -hmm. early 70s to late 80s uh, talk, which which me and Trevor wrote a lot of. There's a couple of songs from the talk album, a couple of songs or so from three songs from the 90125 album, and then some of the really good early Yes songs Mm -hmm. and some just some ideas that I've been sort of thinking about how to how to re-investigate ideas and redesign some mm. musical yes sections and ideas. It's like a, a an, an evening of yes music plus. That's mm-hmm. what we call it anyway. Mm-hmm. And I think the advert is going to say yes. It's A R W. Because why not? Because we're, we're yes as much as anybody else, you know. Exactly. Exactly. And. Um... Do you, do you ever see a time when you and Rick would play with the other remaining members of the classic 1970s lineup? Well, it's hard. You know, Chris passed away now a, a year ago, mm-hmm. just last week, a year ago. Mm-hmm. God bless him. And uh, with Steve, you know, Steve and Alan uh, are doing their thing. It's very hard to know when we'll get together. Yeah, It's got to be a musical idea. Mm-hmm. And somehow I think that... Uh, the the way things are going. I'm a very sort of uh, adventurous musician, and the only way we'll get together probably is if we get in the Hall of Fame in a couple of years or something like that. Mm-hmm. And I think that'll bring us together. Yeah. And but generally speaking, I'm I'm a more adventurous musician. 
Yeah. And uh, I'm very interested in working with Roy Nistalt again and working with Jean-Luc Ponty. I, I've just done a tour. I've just finished a tour with this miraculous violin player and, and ridiculously wonderful man. Mm -hmm. And I want to work with him next year. So there's so many great things coming. Yeah. Uh, with the ARW project, um, do you, have you done any trucks, uh, new trucks, written or finished? And... I'm so much of rehearsing them now. Yeah. I have about three uh, pieces, and then there's a, a long piece that Rick uh, wrote uh, earlier this year that I'm juggling with. I think it can work. Yeah. It, might, it might work out that we'll, we'll tour and then record some more, and then tour, then record some more, that kind of thing over the next year or so. Right. Well, that should be something to uh, to look forward to. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting... Uh, I think anybody who likes music and likes Yes music and likes music in general are going to enjoy the tour, uh, mm -hmm. enjoy what we do, mm -hmm. uh, because we're going to have a great time. That's that's the whole idea. Right yeah. Uh, talking of Yes, I saw the YouTube video of you performing some of the classic songs and some of your own as well, with a Toddmobile, an, an orchestra in Iceland. And that was a, a fantastic performance. Um, I just wonder if you plan any more performances with that or collaborations or any commercial releases of that? Well, the idea was to um, just do the show. Uh, they, they invited me. It's, it's a new... A brand new, uh, incredibly beautiful concert hall that was created there in uh, in uh, Reykjavik, and uh, they wanted me to come along and work with the band Toddmobile. Mm -hmm. And Todd, who runs the band, is quite an incredible uh, guitar player, and he kept inviting me about for a couple of years. And then eventually, I said, "Okay, I'll come over there yeah. as long as we can do Awaken." And he said, oh, please, I want to do Awaken, I want to do Heart of the Sunrise, I want to do Roundabout, uh, Honor of a Lonely Heart, and, you know, the usual kind of songs. And I said, okay, as long as we do Awaken with a choir and a small orchestra. And he said, it shall be done. Right. And, and he did. And I went over with my wife, Jane, and uh, we spent uh, two weeks in uh, Reykjavik. Mm -hmm. And we fell in love with Iceland and the people. Yeah. And... Uh, it was. It's, it's, it is a beautiful uh, recording, and people can go to YouTube and watch it. Yes, very good. As for, yeah, as for releasing it, it's it's one of those things. It'll come out one day, mm -hmm, not mm -hmm. as a video, but uh, it's not something that I was uh, thinking about in my head at that time. Yeah. So I'm just happy that we did a very good version of everything. Yeah, it comes out really well. Um, you've obviously been very productive lately, both uh, last year with the. The album you released was Jean Luc Ponty, Better Late yep. Than Never, and then the two projects we've just been talking about. You're obviously yep. still very passionate about music. What is it that keeps you striving to create new work? Well, I went through a very, very uh, strange period. In, in, in the end of my time with Yes, I got very sick. I was on tour and I had problems with uh, breathing and I was coughing quite a lot. And I'd been to so many specialists and they couldn't figure out the problem. And eventually, uh, I just said, I, I can't carry on touring the way we are. Maybe we should do an acoustic album or a semi-acoustic touring <clears throat> for a couple of years. And uh, the other guys didn't want to do that. So I just started working on, as I mentioned earlier, I started writing with people through the internet. And in a way, that was a godsend for me because... Uh, I could walk. I could walk from my house to my cottage, and my studio is here. Mm -hmm. And every morning, every morning, I'd be sing, singing new ideas and singing new songs. And this happened for, gosh, uh, how many years? Uh, it's twelve years now. Mm -hmm. And I've created so much music in the last twelve years. It's, it's kind of bizarre, <laughs> yeah. but uh, it's just something that I do. And halfway through, of course, not many people know, but I, I, I died. Uh, you know basically died a couple of times in 2008. Once I nearly drowned, and then the other time I I, I, I couldn't breathe uh, because of the terrible uh, asthma problem that I'd never had in my life. And all mm -hmm. of a sudden I was nearly dead, and my wife, God bless her, saved my life. Wow. And from, from that moment, I just wanted to become a better musician. I wanted to become a better person. I wanted to create some great music. Because what's the point of living and pretending 
Well, my best music was in the 70s. Mm. Or my best music was in the 80s. No, my best music is coming. Right. Because mm. what's the point of doing it? Yeah, it's it's like, it. I'm painting more and more as well. I love painting. Yeah, going through something like that must put a new perspective on how you view things. Well, you thank God you're alive and thank the gods that you've been given the chance to create uh, more music and create more, you know, people like what I do. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm not so well known. I'm just well known in a certain area. I can go to every city in the world and play in front of 500 people and mm -hmm. have a great time and talk about life and sing songs that they remember mm -hmm. uh, in new songs that they're going to find out about. And uh, so when I do my solo shows, it's just me and my lovely wife, Jane, and we go off on a, a beautiful sort of semi-holiday. We mm -hmm. go around the world and a couple of guitars, and uh, I'm so grateful. Now, over, the, over the years, you've collaborated with so many uh, great musicians. Is there anyone that you've always admired that you still want to work with that you haven't worked with yet? Van Gillis. <laughs> Angelis, I keep emailing him. He, he isn't very well, though. He's, he's been very ill for a while. Mm. I'm going to email him today and send him my blessings because I think he's going through a tough time at this moment. Mm. But, you know, obviously the great people that I would love to work with, there's so many. Mm. Uh, it's an endless stream of, uh, you know, just you can pick any name and I say, oh, I'd love to sing with him or I'd love to work with him and, mm -hmm. you know, I'd love to spend time with him or her. I'd love to sing with her, so on and so on. There are so many great singers, songwriters, musicians in this world. So with the upcoming ARW project, uh, once that's all done, what, what's, what's next in the pipeline for John Anderson? Well, I was in touch with a friend uh, this is a couple of years ago. I started writing with a friend who lives in San Francisco, and we started writing. He loves Middle Eastern music. Mm -hmm. So I wrote about five or six ideas with him, and I have no idea where I was going with them. They're more, I don't know if you know, um, sort of um, the kind of Middle Eastern music that is around. It's very spiritual, very, very um, connected to uh, Mother Earth. And uh, I'm thinking of Nasran Ali Khan, who was the greatest uh, oh, singer, nice. Pakistani uh, mm -hmm. Amazing. And it's that kind of energy, you know. And uh, about a month ago, uh, somebody sent me a, a link. And there's an, there's an actual Middle Eastern ensemble here in our local uh, Polytechnic uh, University here at Cal Poly. And they have this Middle Eastern. There's about 20 of them. There's about 12 singers and uh, about eight musicians. And they make uh, such great music. And they put on this show every year. Mm -hmm. So I got in touch with them and said, I really want to work with you guys because I've been writing this kind of music. Mm -hmm. So they're excited and uh, we'll probably do it next year sometime. And uh, I'm going to meet them next week uh, for the second time and just go through the songs and how it's going to be presented visually. And uh, that's that's a nice little idea for next year. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's another project I've been working on for now uh, 10 years, which is, uh, I did an album many years ago called Elias of Sun Hello. I know it well. And, uh, well, my son was always saying, Dad, when are you going to do Son of Elias? Mm -hmm. and, and I had to figure out what that meant. And it took <laughs> me a few, few years, quite a long time, actually. And eventually I figured out what it is. Now putting it together is part and parcel of all this music that I've been writing over the past uh, 12 years now. And, uh, it's just a large amount of musical ideas that all seem to interweave with each other and uh, work. Mm -hmm. And now it's a question of how do I put it out there into mm -hmm. the big world? Mm -hmm. I'll let you know. That sounds <laughs> great. I look forward to that one. It's a pretty crazy concept. The idea is that you know, music is everlasting, music is forever, and t music is timeless. Mm -hmm. That's the whole concept. And... Uh, it's a lot to do with the golden mean, which is a very, very amazing sort of concept of this planet that we live on. Right. And uh, you can just Google the golden mean, and it gives you an idea of what's going on. Okay. Okay. Well, I'd like to thank you for your time today. It's been a great pleasure talking to you. Uh, I wish you continued success, and I look forward to seeing you 
in LA at the Orpheum Theatre on November the 22nd with Anderson, Rabin and Wakeman. And for anybody listening out there, I highly recommend the Anderson and Salt project. So uh, thank you for your time, John. It's been a pleasure and uh, hey. continued success. Wish you well, man. Take care. Bye-bye.